with your hosts, Coach Casey and Damo. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Overtime, presented by Inside the Locker Room. So we're here with our guest, Klein Wong, of course, my co-host, Damo. Klein, uh, we just recorded a phenomenal show. I can't wait for everybody to see it. We talked about all things combat sports and MMA. You represent South Tampa Jiu-Jitsu, RMNU. Yes, Hobson Mora Nations United. So we wanted to talk about kind of something we touched on a little bit during the episode. We talked about going hard in sparring and in the gym and kind of, you know, getting hurt and yeah. stuff. One guy that came to my mind when we were talking about like that that workout warrior, that spar warrior was um Miguel Torres, yeah. the uh ever famous mixed martial artist from back in Pioneer. the WEC days. Yeah. He put WEC on the map, For sure. right? Um he was a uh, number 3 ranked fighter in the world behind only Anderson Spider Silva and George yeah. St. Pierre at the time back yeah. in the mid 2000s. And he was on top of the world at the 135 weight class. I think he finished, um, Chase Beebe was his name. He finished him in like a ridiculously short time. He basically darse choked him. Chase. First time anybody, first time anybody ever saw a, a darse choke, yeah. um, on the, live the, TV. The Joe Darce special. Yeah. He, <laughs> he darse choked him in under 10 seconds or something crazy like that because wow. the guy went in hard and fast and he basically just cinched yeah. him up and put him in it so fast. Fight was over before it ever started yeah. and he went nuts and everybody was like, headlock. rematch, rematch, rematch and they're like, really? Kind of like you were talking about he got finished in 10 seconds. He's not getting a rematch. Yeah. Um, but Miguel Torres was a big name at the time and, and he was really coming up. Um, he only lost one fight ever and he was like 33-1 and one. but he had this reputation... Until- Right, he had this, exactly, his career fell apart and it happened like almost overnight because he had this uh, staunch reputation in the gym of of having a a hard chin, of not being able, you could not knock this dude out, you could never hit him hard enough to, to knock him out, and he would bring in these heavyweights that threw bombs just to prove he could, he could take a punch. I know. And it sounds super stupid yeah, okay. in 2020 that yeah. we're even talking about this because um, this guy could have been the greatest of all time, but he definitely was one of the greatest at the time. And he used to just love... Uh, having people react to him getting punched in the face and yeah. saying like, "Oh, look at that jaw! Yeah. Look at that jaw! Showman. You can't take me down yeah, for sure." And he'd have guys that weighed two twenty, two thirty, two fifty punch him in an exposed face so that he could say he could take a punch. Yeah, and he weighed one hundred and forty. Yeah, and I'll bet that gave him like tremendous confidence. Like at the time, you yeah, know, like like to go into a fight and know that like, man, this guy can't hurt me. So all I have to do is outwork him. And I've always wondered that, like in fights, where the guy will literally drop his hands and just say, "Go ahead, take a shot," and then just eat it. I've and it, I've seen it work, and I've seen it not work. I've seen, I've seen both yeah. too. I just I've never understood that. You're, you're you never know one shot could um, put you out. Yeah, but imagine if like you just want this guy to run at you. And, like, sometimes it comes from, like, a cocky place, like when Michael Venom yeah. Page does it in Bellator. But, like, what if you're, like, fuck this guy, and you just want him to run at you, and you give him, like, the middle finger, you give him, like, that. You know, nine, like, ten times out of ten, you'll look stupid. You'll look stupid if you do it no matter what. But what if right after you do it, he charges at you because he can't believe what's happening, and you, you just clip him as a counter? Like, that yeah. can be as offensive a tactic to draw out a counter as, say, like, trying to reach for the jab or something. Well, that, that very tactic basically ended uh, Anderson Silva's career as we know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because and he, he was did one that. of the, the famous ones doing Dude, it. Dude, yeah, he got because, caught doing it when he was doing the that didn't hurt dance and yeah. then got, like, shut off. Dude. Weidman basically just yeah. knocked him out. Left yeah. He caught him once and, and then I, he hit the ground and then he just he pounced on him. And I, Okay, let me ask you guys this. Like, what do you like seeing more? Do you like seeing the showboating and then it, it works and they look like a god? Or do you like seeing the showboating and then like it goes terribly wrong and they get caught and shut up? As a as a football receiver and as, yeah. as my persona, yeah. I, I, I love to see it work. I love to see it work. <laughs> I love man, to see it work. Know, it's funny because I, I can honestly see both sides of it as, sure. as a fan. Uh, if I put my coach's hat on yeah. and I see Michael Venom Page do the stupid shit he does out there, I want to kill him. Yeah, I, I want to kill yeah. him. I want to say I want to see him get That's shut up. Boring. And I want to see the guy show As a show fan, him up. as a fan, I do love watching it, especially when he developed this this reputation 
of being unstoppable. And he would constantly flash to people like, nothing you can do can hurt me, and I'm yeah. going to finish you whenever I want. Um, I loved it. I really did. I loved it when Conor yeah. McGregor was doing very similar stuff you know, oh, yeah. early on in his career. I just think that um, eventually you're going to get stopped. For sure. And even MVP did. For even sure. Even MVP got stopped. And on a like, philosophical, like moral level, like as a martial artist, and more importantly like an artist, like I don't think that – that shows what you want. Like, you're a performer, right? Yeah. That doesn't show what you should want to show, in my humble opinion. I don't think, like, because that comes from a place of, like, needing attention or, like, needing, a, you know? I think it comes from the same place of, like, needing validation. It's like, why do I need the If you're, like, legitimately showboating trying to mess with someone's head, yeah. I get it. And it's cool to see when it works. But as a martial artist, like, one, it's disrespectful. That's stupid. Sure. But also, it's like, dude, it kind of backfires and makes you look weak because when the dude is cool hand Luke and just catches you with a counter and head kicks you into the Andromeda galaxy. I, like <laughs> that stuff, that didn't work, did it? And you look like a dumbass. Or you, you do it yeah, and you go to a decision, you know, it, yeah. You just, yeah, yeah. I've seen that yeah. too, where guys are showboating and yeah. they show, I've seen that live, like yeah. against maybe a guy uh, who shouldn't be in there with the him. CM Punk fight. Who did CM Punk lose to uh, last year? Like the truth Jackson, right? Who basically got ousted from the UFC dude. after that? Because Dana White's point was, is that, uh, he clearly was yeah. better than CM Punk. CM Punk uh, went to a decision with him. It was clearly Mike Jackson was winning that fight yeah. by a mile, but he should have tried to finish Punk. Oh, yeah. Punk was exhausted. Sure. He had to cut a lot of weight, you know, leading up to the fight, and he just embarrassed himself out there by allowing himself to go to a decision with CM Punk where yeah. he could have finished him. And then he, uh, Dana White, basically said, "I'm never going to let that guy fight in the UFC again," so, because you know so. for a number of reasons too. Because it's like, man, he, th- that guy was like a part time fighter photographer. Right, Mm -hmm. but it's also like, dude, you're not Conor McGregor. My coach Mm -hmm. has a fight uh, on the 15th of February, and the guy that he's fighting is one of those guys where it's like you're not down to earth. You think Mm -hmm. that you're on this stage that's way Mm -hmm. bigger than it is, and you think that you are a performer at a higher level than you are. And this guy's just chomping at the bit and talking all this trash on social media to the promoter, to all the Mm -hmm. fighters in the group chat for the promotion to everything. It's like, dude, if it works, you look like a douche. And if it doesn't work, you, you look, look like, like even, you look like even worse of a douche. And you're set back a loss now. See, and it's like, now, man. Those, those celebrations, those showboating, that. Your brand is yeah, damaged. Yeah, you know? that, I mean, even that even goes against the, the principles of jujitsu and, and, yeah. and all of those branches. It goes against the principle of it, the core. So you remember when James lights out Tony in boxing matches Ooh. would pull back and stick his tongue out? Yeah, in the in the Philly shell, because he was basically uh, saying you can't hit me. I get and, that. And and James Lightsout Tony actually did probably take way too many punches. Yeah. But in the Philly shell, the the concept is is that you roll off punches, so you're taking contact, but you never take full blows because of the way you're constantly you you. It's not footwork; it's all in the hips and in yeah, the yeah. head, and you just keep bobbing back and forth. And he would stick his tongue out after somebody missed a bunch of punches because they couldn't hit him in the those, face. And those little moments. I think you're fine. Those are more indicative of like, dude, I'm having fun right, right now. Exactly. I'm enjoying this right now. Like I do sometimes you have it inspiring too when guys it, are going hard, maybe a little bit harder, and someone catches it clean and you, you take a step back, but like you have this rush of like, oh that so, was real. So I was thinking about it as a generational thing because I think that it has become a lot more prevalent in this generation than than in prior generations. And you could maybe say that Anderson Silva kind of maybe started that because everyone idolized him for the last 10, 15 years, and now the guys coming up in the game are kind of you know, playing off of what he did. Um, But it goes back to boxing. Uh, Muhammad Ali did it, you know. uh, um, And there were a lot of showboats in boxing for, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know. But I was just thinking from a mixed martial arts term because it is so much more dangerous and there's so much more on the line. uh, Anything can happen. And, uh, you know, there's so many different ways somebody can beat you. Imagine if... MVP stepped into the cage with Don Fry or or Mark Coleman or Matt and Hughes and did and yeah. did that shit. Yeah. They would try yeah. to eat him alive. Yeah. <laughs> the thing with him too is it's like, man, I, I, on some level, I think he knows he's better than this guy, so he can't yeah. do that to right. him. And he's putting on a show, you know. Right. It, it, dude, there's a lot that goes into it too. I would imagine on like that level of professional fight because it's like, okay, I, I, on some stage I'm a performer, yeah. I am a fighter, but I have to make it fun for these guys. It can't just look like me tuning up this guy. It, it's it's weird. There's a lot. And dude, sometimes there's bad intentions, and like you want to hurt somebody, and you want to let them know, like, bro, I just hit you. 
issue with that shit. There's, there's little bits to it, too, where it's like, man, I, I feel like if you have a moment or two, that's fine. And it's the same thing as I think about, like, with, like, respect in fights. Like, guys, like, hugging before the final round or something. Or, like, if they bump fists too many times. Sure. It's like, dude, I get it. Let's get to the fight. Right. It's same thing with the bad intentions. Like, dude, I get it. You don't like each other and you're a savage. Let's get to the fight and see who's going to win. You know? Yeah. You know, just equating this over to our expertise football. Yeah. And you've heard it almost yeah, every after, practice. Can I just say, after sacks... I would be the biggest piece of shit. I would be, I would be <laughs> dancing, dude. I would have the best So, dance. So after a touchdown, I, and I, I did steal this from Cameron, dude, but after a touchdown, I had to do it. it was he just, always did the it, Superman it, it, thing. But you know what? That's... And, and, that's yeah. If you go back and watch film of me in Chicago before Cam Newton got drafted, yeah. I was doing it too. Like, and yeah. that's like enough to be like, all right, like this isn't like the McCringleberry thing. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Yeah. Like, that's like a subtle like, oh, man, Superman. Yeah. Super, Superman's a humble guy. Maybe he's humble. That's what I was driving to. I was, yeah, I was yeah, coming yeah. to that point. <laughs> if you were dancing and doing like the mind, I mean, walking I, I down mean, the I front stairs, flipped bro. into the end zone and then did it. Whatever. So there was this. There was this one Show really funny celebration. <laughs> there was this one really funny celebration that he made me bust out laughing. Though that he normally didn't do. He he uh, scored a long touchdown where uh, he basically caught a bomb going into the end zone. And as soon as he crossed the plane, he turned around and threw his arms up <laughs> and just basically fell out. Those like, are cool. <laughs> Or like Star Lord, yeah, yeah exactly. Lord That's Dad, basically bro. what he did. Excellent. He just he just flattened out and, and, did, and took a flat back bump on the ground. C- celebrations are some of the best things. It's, in the sport. it's worth the the little Dude, injury of falling. Out. So much adrenaline yeah. too. Like in the middle of a game, it must be tough because you have to conserve your energy. Um, I don't. I've never really celebrated celebrated after any of my kickboxing fights or like a jujitsu match because in a jujitsu match, most of the time you're in like a high school auditorium too. So like, what are we doing here? You got a five dollar medal and you're in a high school auditorium. Let's not let's keep it down. Um, but like maybe maybe it's because MMA fight carries such like anxiety with it for me. Mm-hmm. But um, it was a level of like, dude, I did it. I'm so excited. I've seen this done, and now I'm doing what I've seen. And also, like, I have been stressed out for the past, like, I don't know how long thinking about this. Like, well, I mean, it's at it's, night, you're, in the morning. You're a performer, right? So you have yeah. leading up to it. You train, yeah, you practice, whatever it is that you think about. You vision, I'm going to score a touchdown. I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to do whatever it is. And then you equate it to what you saw, what, what yeah, inspired man. you to be in that sport. And when it's, like, relief, like when you take a pee after a really <laughs> long time of holding it or something. Like, dude, the level of relief that physically <laughs> washes over you it was just like let all that energy out and my fight was so quick too that it was like I had all this nervous energy bundled yeah. up in me like nothing really happened this particular one so it was like dude like I felt so much love spiky, right? from my teammates like I hopped on the cage and I like pointed at them I was like dude you guys you guys came to see me in Lake City Florida maybe the worst place in America oh my god dude and you drove out here. You paid money to see shout me. out to Lake City. <laughs> shout out to like shout out to the lake places in Florida, in the middle of nowhere that I fight. That I fight um, for now. But like you guys paid thirty five dollars to come see me at a venue with no alcohol. It ended super quick. So you essentially paid a dollar a second to see me perform. And like now we can't even. Drink. And it's like all this. Tension is released, and it's like sometimes you gotta celebrate, bro. Sometimes you gotta dance. Like when when Venus Williams, there was a huge thing about uh, Venus or Serena like smashing a racket. People yeah. got upset about yeah. it. It's like, yeah. dude, you ever cared about something? Right. Yeah. yeah. You ever had dreams? Yeah. And and it, it, you know when you're at the top of the game, it's easier for people to pick on you about something because I mean she smashed a ra- she racket. And I how, 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 how many rackets did them. how yeah. many rackets did John McEnroe oh, smash? You know. <laughs> you know what I mean? to see that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Back in the day, you wanted to see John McEnroe lose his shit on a tennis court, and now we get upset because Venus throws a tennis racket down. Yeah. You know or. Serena, and there's you know, maybe filter. There's conversations we don't want to get into about like gender too. But it's yeah, like, you know, it, it, it definitely is the standard. But it's thing, like it's, but it's anybody who's a who's a watcher watching someone who does things. You know. Can I just say I name drop Don Fry? I just want to say I, I miss Don Fry so much. Bro, you and, name drop Miguel, Miguel Torres. Torres. That's big ups with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's WEC stuff. That's good. Oh, bro, I was the biggest fan of WEC man Cowboy, in that blue man. cage. We were just about I know, I know. Wow. Cowboy Cerrone, like Pettis with yes. that dude. That clip that they yeah. show before every Anthony Pettis, like, you guys probably seen this. Bendo, just Bendo off the cage. I'm just gonna say overtime only lasts 15 minutes. So, you know, superstar. <laughs> What is, what, what is Game overtime? I'm out. I'm out. Overtime is that, a, is that a sports reference? 
Is that real? This is real. Alright, well this is the client show. Now, so we're gonna talk about some animal videos. There's a video of a man at a reptile show in Myanmar. Pull this... You, pull this up. The man puts like a reticulated python on it. Alright, that... Catch more original content like this at youtube.com forward slash inside the LR. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.